Hey guys, Billy here with a VOD review of an 18 Sanguine Depths with the affixes that are present on the day I post this video, which is Spiteful, Grievous, and Fortified. Um, as you can see, my talents, they're always up in the top left, and my, you can always see what spells I'm casting right here, and we'll get started. This dungeon, I actually, I actually kind of like this dungeon. I, I, it's, it's definitely hard, but I actually like this dungeon. So first thing is if your group does a double pull here, what you want to do is you want to mirror his image early on, because in case he double pulls these two packs, that your mirror's image will kind of protect you from aggro, right? So, um, first thing you do, like so right here, that was a Mapega. I, that was a mess up. I kind of hid my UI. It, it was a misclick, we're not going to talk about it, we're going to go on the next. So, Mirror's Image, Potion, AoE Combust, this first two pack. You can stand in melee, because you have Mirror's Image up, right? So, but be careful of Frontals and Traps. Frontals and Traps are the most dangerous thing in this pool. So, um... Yeah, AoE Combust, as soon as done, Dragon's Breath, look for 30% HP targets. And uh, yeah, so there's, this is Spiteful, right? Um, spiteful is a new affix in Shadowlands. When mobs die, they drop a shade that fixates one of the five tar party members. You can tell that it fixates you by the red glowing. So there's two shades, right? This one's on me because it's glowing red. This one's not. So that's the main way I can tell. There's probably weaker ways out there, but the way I look is just looking at the red um they slowly drain their health over time so if if like if you never attack them they will eventually just die right so there this pull no combust we're gonna you know double fire blast flame strike throw a phoenix flames maybe if we need to if not we'll just be hard casting a flame strike so the whole time yeah just hard cast flame strike try to drop your flame strike where you think your tank will be because you want to kind of try to predict movement if you think your tank is like a bit shaky and moving a lot. Try to predict where he's going and as soon as they hit 30% HP, you'll be uh, scorching for flame strikes, of course. These models drop shades. I see that this one is on me because it's glowing red. But uh, yeah, was, if they're not, like that one right there is on me. You can see the red around it. So I'm just going to try to avoid it, right? Blink blink through it, okay? And so right here, what I want to do is on this pack, I want to put my combust on cooldown because I want to combust the pack after the next pack, right? So two packs from now, I want to combust. So I will cancel. I, I will shifting power until my combust is back. This My combust just now comes back, so I'll cancel shifting power and just, a, we can, and just single target combust, right? Single target combust into the mob. Because it's two targets, right? Two targets, you will do a Pyroblast Combust. Um, yeah, this, the, pretty much the reason this is because I want to put Combust on cooldown. Because there's two big pulls next, right? And having Combust for either of them is good. Um, so when these mobs die, they'll drop Shades. If they're on that, that one's on me, so I'll Dragon's Breath and I'll Frost Nova to walk away from it. Wait till they're done. So you can actually skip this Brute Pack. If you wait for this patrol, this Brute Patrol, sorry, my screen is weird, to go towards the, like this side of the room, right? You want to make sure that this Brute goes over there, and you can just walk by this pack. And it's, it's good, because this pack is kind of not what usually... Because it gives you... Oh, I just dropped my water bottle. Pulling that pack gives you bad prideful timings. So it's really, it's very recommended to avoid pulling that pack and doing the first three packs than these two. Yeah, this pack, no combust, so I will run a power on pull, double fire blast flame strike, and then just hard cast flame strikes. Try to set one of these ticks on your focus. I didn't do that just because I'm targeting one anyways. But when these, when the low, these lower health ticks, they will hit 30% quicker, so you want to try to scorch off the 
the non-elites because they'll be lower first, right? So keep that in mind. Um, so next pull is going to be my combust, and I will save Mirror's image because next pull is a lot of mobs, and I'm gonna have a lot of damage, right? If my combust is up and pull, so you know we kind of ditch the shades, pop Mirror's image, and then AOE combust, right? You can stand in melee if if your Mirror's image is up. And you want to you want to try to find somewhere to kick one of these ticks, of course, because the ticks they do a lot of damage if they blow up. If they if they get their cast off, they do a lot of damage. So you want to try to avoid that. Um. So this is grievous is really hard for prideful. So this next prideful is going to be very scary. So you're probably going to want to trade the majority of your defensives on this prideful right here especially if it's grievous because grievous is very very bad so i think our shaman got stunned there which didn't help but he ascendanced he pressed ascendance as you can see but we're going to be chilling when you, when, you, when you see your peeler in ascendance you know that you're probably going to be fine because right now resto shamans kind of do the most healing so at some time in this pull i'm going to use every pretty much every defensive i have right I um I have health potion waiting still right here. If I had health stones, I would use them, but I did not get health stones. So I'll use my health pot, and I will use my engineering belt shield that I clicked because I did not have it bound. Uh, try to get a good use of mirror's image. I actually didn't get a good use of mirror's image here. So um yeah, grievous just makes pridefuls way harder than they should be. Um, pridefuls should not be this hard, but because it's Grievous and people are kind of pushing high keys. It's actually really hard. So once that pack dies, make sure you make conjure food to um like instantly start healing yourself. It's really important on Grievous that you heal yourself. Yeah, lust on pull potion if it's up, and uh, single target combust. Right, I use the double fire blast, the fireball double fire blast opener, and uh, yeah. So this first charge, you kind of, I would not recommend immuning this first charge if you're a mage. Unless the boss dies in like 5 seconds, right? Like say you just crush this boss. But the thing is, is there's no damage going out on that first charge. So you really just would rather soak it, right? The next charges are going to be more dangerous because you're going to get mechanics like Severing Smash. So when Severing Smash happens, if you have Alter Time, you want to always use Alter Time. Alter Time full HP and try to find a good use for it, right? Just try to find at least some kind of use for the altar time. Just make sure you do it at full HP, right? After you soak all the orbs, there's a kick that comes. This kick. You want to make sure you CS this instantly. Because if it gets like two ticks off, someone could die. If it gets one tick off, it's scary, but... Yeah. So this this charge, we wanted to immune it, but... I, we kind of were all half HP. So I soaked it, but it kind of traded out my... It traded out my cheat death seed. We actually got kind of lucky right there. I would have died if I wasn't playing the the night fade cheat death the seed. It's actually really strong. So I do have combust right here. So I will mirror's image. Or I mean, this is this was a mistake for me, right? Take note, you want a mirror's image. Look how I pull aggro on this mob. It's a misplay, but you want to look to mirror's image there. I guess I decided to held it. But a, a lot of the times, if you just place, if you know you pull aggro and just back away, it could be fine. And I think I just kind of wanted to do a lot of damage, but I, sh I should have Premier's image before I did this pull. So I'll, I'll frost over them and walk through them and drop a ring of frost if I need to, just to help, right? Next pull is this single target mob. Nothing too really special about this, right? My combust is uh, not on cooldown, or my combust is on cooldown. So it's just like a standard single target right here, right? Try you you can blink for like casting movement or shimmer on these little like circles to dodge, but sometimes it's just safer to move out, right? <clears throat> So next pull, my combust is going to come up right now. I'm going to hold it for next pull. 
this shade's gonna come out, we're gonna frost nova and probably just walk ahead of it. And uh yeah, drop mirror's image, get in melee, and then uh flame strike combust. Three targets, so remember three targets, we do that flame strike combust. <clears throat> Shifting power on them halfway through. I would recommend kicking the dot. I forgot what the spell is called. It's whatever the oppressors call. It's cast Rex Soul. I'd recommend stopping that one. And if you can, if you see circle of su the circle of suppression cast going off, try to pre dispel your friendly. Right. I'll probably do, I think next pack it happens, but try to either line it right here, the curse the spell, or just spell your friendly. Right. That's the way you can help that cast. Is I would never kick that cast. I would just either line it right here or dispel it instantly on your friendly so this pull is no combust this pull is no combust i think the boom can might have cool lens not sure but um we we're gonna we're gonna stand a little far because there's that chains mechanic that these mobs do called dread bindings so we have to kind of outrange it that back a bit and once we know one cast goes out then I got ready to line that cast, but it someone kicked it. So this cast is going to go off on my healer. I'm going to instantly dispel it right there. So you want to pay attention to that cast. And if it, one's casting, who it's casting on. If it's on you, line it. If it's on your friendly, try to pre-dispel them. Don't, like, yeah, just just dispel them, right? It's good. Um, Right here, I'll drop ring. We'll kind of use all of our CC just to keep them still. Like, I think our druid used mass entanglement right there. Um, as soon as I see shades, I kind of, I kind of just throw out a frost nova, a ring of frost. <clears throat> so next pull, I have combust, and so I want to mention something to you guys. There's a bat that flies through right here. You guys have probably seen it before. You want to stand not on the bridge because of that, because if you shifting power right here and the bat flies by, it's gonna pull the bat. So, so my solution currently is to go into this corner over here. Like deep in the corner and then do my combust. Because I've pulled that bat before. That lagged. Yeah, I pulled that bat before. Okay, so this is three targets. Uh standard A we combust. Uh we dread bindings is going to come, so I will have to outrange it after the shifting power. So stand max range and then go back in. And then yeah, we the mobs are at 30%, so you're just you're just scorching all the time. Um, so next pack you can pull or you can skip. I guess we have Prideful next. I guess I didn't know. So I actually Ring of Frost and it went over there. Well, we're just gonna disregard that. I think I Ring of Frost in the ceiling. But yeah, this is kind of a tight corridor, but not. it's pretty good to be stacked for Shresto Shaman anyways. Um, so yeah, I have no... Remember, when Prideful comes up and you have your Health Stone Potion, and you have altered time, you want to try to find some kind of use of this. So I do have Combust up right here. Combust will be up for next pull. Yeah, use Hellst Hellstone's use right there. You barely live. Not really barely, actually. I guess we we're kind of chilling. So you can actually skip this guy if you wait for the red mob to... I use shifting power. That was actually an accident. We're not going to talk about it either. See, I, I, everyone makes mistakes. But if that mob is always on the left side, you can just walk right by it. The entire group can just walk right by it. Yes, yeah, so I see he was on the, le the, on the left side, which means everyone can just walk right by it. If you're a rogue, you'll shroud. So this, I remember I kind of, I think I fat fingered my, uh, I am probably was like reading chat or something, and I fat fingered my shifting power. So I'm just doing a combust with no uh, shifting power, right? It's still fine. As you can see, you don't need shifting power to do like insane damage in a combust. It's still it's still good damage. <clears throat> These drop shades, and we're kind of in a tight corridor. So I will like fro yeah, frost nova for sure. I guess we pulled yeah, we pulled these mobs. This is a this is kind of a small pack though, so it's not that dangerous. There is a patrol coming. So I think we called our DPS to incap it. Yeah, he incaps the pat. The pat was coming, so you want to kind of look ahead the pat. If the pat's coming, try to alert your group. Say like, yo, the pat's coming, we need to 
Like I can poly it, but it'd be better if we could like incap it, blind it, root it. Whatever kind of whatever instant CC your group has, if there's one. I think DHs can might be able to imprison it. I'm not sure. Those two shades come out, so we'll we'll frost some of them. We're not gonna hit it because it's gonna break, right? So we're just yeah, we're chilling. So my com when I started this pack, my combust is on a 15 second cooldown. And as soon as I see that, I shifting power to get my combust back, and then just throw combust at the three mobs. That's the best play to do right here. If you're looking for like high damage, just uh, make sure you try to combust every pack. You need to use shifting power for the cooldown reduction. It's good. The mobs are at 30%, scorching as poor usual. Looks like a lot of shades, Frost Nova. I think one of I think our players are trapped on the other side. I think our healer is trapped over there, but it's fine. We're just gonna you know we're not no one's actually damaging those. As you can see, 7k damage done. They just they just die on their own. We check if the gargoyles here, because there's there's one of those per side of those stone gargoyles that kind of appear. There's one per side, so we're checking if that was the one. It was not. So this one's my tank is kind of hiding it a lot. So I kind I noticed that my tank is tanking it. So I'm going to try to. I my, the goal is to try to flame strike where you think he's gonna go. So you want to predict the way your tank moves. But yeah, there's a lot of stuff on the ground. The yeah, these two aren't fixated on me, so I can just sit there, right? It doesn't really matter that much because they're not fixated on me. Be wary though. Sometimes if you're playing with a hunter, they can like feign death it off, and it'll it'll refixate someone. So that's something you want to kind of keep in mind. So my tank does a big pull right here, which is interestingly hard. But you know my combust is up. I will combust this. I I'm going to save my potion still because the second boss in Sanguine Depths is actually extremely hard. So I think it's best to save potion for the boss in Sanguine Depths, the second boss, because I think that boss is hard, in my opinion. It got nerfed a little bit, but I still think it's kind of hard. So that mob's at 30%. He's the only mob at 30%, so we're scorching him. Uh, we find the use for Dragon's Breath somewhere in there. Try to kick the shackles on the Warden. I think I kicked it at the very last second, but you want to try to kick that spell because it like roots a person and if you don't have if it roots like a healer that doesn't have a freedom or a blink ability then <clears throat> it can like they, they they can die to the circle on the ground um yeah, so we're kind of almost wiping here but i think we're chilling uh this this was almost prideful but it was quite not prideful so um just make sure on spiteful weeks you stay far away from these shades because they do like 70% of your HP when they melee you. It's very, very painful. This one's on me. Blink it. We have to res the we have to res our teammates, so we have to make sure we drop combat, which means we are trying to actually kill the shades. So right here is going to be with my certain percent it's going to be three pack into prideful as you can see the three models will spawn the prideful i'm going to combust this pack because i will have combust on pull on boss if i do it and i will do what i do here is i do a pyroblast combust to make sure that i have oops to make sure that i have combust back because if you pyroblast you get more cooldown reduction right than flame strike so I will use a Pyroblast Combust. See, it's Pyroblast Combust is still okay damage. And I'm doing that for the purpose of making sure that I get my Combust back for the boss. Even though I, I might have anyways, for all I know. But I wasn't sure if I would, so that's kind of why I did that. Because <clears throat> that was three targets, and it's technically more damage to Combust. Flame Strike on three targets. But yeah. Cool introduction is... The main priority, right? You want to make sure you are just efficient at farming and bust back. So it's spiteful drops in spiteful into prideful. So I'm going to frost over them, and then we're going to kind of try to step away. 
step away from the prideful that is. So uh, yeah, this is just a standard single target. You want, if you can, you really want to try to hold combust for the boss because the, I think the boss is hard and there's a. If you combust on pull uh, next, right before the first ad spawns, your combust will come up on the third set when the ad comes, right? On the first, on this next boss, that is. Like the little ad that spawns that pulses like a lot of AoE. But if I need to use health pot, I will, but apparently I did not need to use health pot. Uh, we, get the, we get the buff, we go. I will use potion, lust, and everything here. This boss needs to be needs to get destroyed. The way our combo set up, we actually have like I I was actually impressed with how fast this boss died. Because just look at the Boomkin's damage here. We are literally we are literally nine seconds into a fight. Look at we're literally nine seconds into a fight, a single target fight, and look at the <laughs> Wow, okay. We're just gonna disregard that, right? So this this boss got completely melted in my group. Uh, try to delay combust like a little bit if you can, like a, a few seconds on pull, just so you can get some cleave on the, the ad. Yeah, so we are we are 22 seconds into the boss fight, and this boss is dead. Um, I think I'm apparently I'm third place in the meters. Bit bit interesting there, but yeah, my cl these classes are doing a lot of damage right now, but it's because bloodlust and their pumpers. But, uh, you know, I did not get a second combust. The boss died in like 40 seconds or something. So, it is what it is. If there, if that boss is long enough to get another combust, I would definitely use it because that boss is hard. But that boss died very quick, so it's not that big of a difference, right? Um, okay, so this is, we're doing this pull, then we're going downstairs. I uh, use shifting power. I use shifting power just to kind of put it on cooldown, because I'm not actually sure if I can get a combust here. I don't think I will be able to get a combust here, because the the mobs are at thirty percent by the time my combust comes up. So I'm kind of just. I guess I do lob my combust. I was actually unsure if I lobbed my combust, but I do think it's good. Yeah, so I definitely just like you want to put it on cooldown. Like I said, you want to look to put it on cooldown. If usually your DPS friends have cooldowns at the beginning of the pool, so the mobs look like they're dying quicker, but they're actually not. And I noticed in that scenario, I noticed that the mobs are living a long time. So I just threw my combust, right? I don't think it's bad. So we need, I think we need one more pack before we go downstairs. <clears throat> yeah, we need one more pack before we go downstairs. So it was actually good that I threw my combust there. Because I could have combusted this, but... The pack downstairs is, the next pack is a three pack, which is downstairs, right? So I'm using my shifting power here. Just because if I shifting power here, it's going to hit five targets. Uh, these mobs are actually getting kited a lot. So I'm going to notice that, and I'm going to try to flame strike ahead of where the mobs go, but it looks like they dropped trees, so I know that it's good for a bit. I can see them targeting the trees on my frame. Well, yeah, they're going to be standing still for a little bit. I see that now they're targeting my tank again, which means they're going to be kited, maybe. So I'm going to start, I mean, it's, it's scorch time now, so it doesn't really matter. But we're going to try to, you know, flame strike ahead of mobs, try to hit as many as flame strike as possible. I think right there I missed my flame strike. That shade is on me. It actually meleeed me, but I lived. I had my barrier up. A uh, bunch of shades there, so we're just gonna cross over them and move on ahead. You know, looking back, I pro I probably could have held my combust, but it didn't make that much of a difference, right? Because the benefit of throwing combust in that earlier pack was that on this three pack right here, it means I do have combust. Which, if I combusted at the last pack, I might have not had. A combust back, right? So here I can throw a full shifting power combust. Just pretty much destroy this pack. So the the benefit of just like kind of throwing combust on cooldown is that you you can get more casts of combust in a key, and that like casting more combustions in a key is gonna for sure make your overall damage look higher. Uh, yeah. So remember, mobs thirty percent hit the scorch flame strike. 
Um, so yeah, so two right here. We're pretty much it's gonna be two mobs and boss. We see two mobs, no combust, no rune of power. We're hard casting flame strike the entire time. Uh, try to kick that wreck soul cast because it leaves a dot and it's kind of shitty. The mobs are kind of moving a little bit, so I'm gonna just like flame strike kind of ahead of the mobs. This mob is thirty percent scorch flame strike. Um, my combust will be on pull up on pull for the boss. If I use my shifting power, see 20 seconds on combust, shifting power, next mob is single target. What I, I should have I should have cast some my shifting power earlier. I guess we didn't actually pull the boss, so I was able I guess he had to get mana. So I didn't actually use my shifting power because he he got mana, right? Single target opener. As per usual, use my potion right when it comes up. Try to potion bosses when you can, but if not, just try to potion all your combusts on cooldown. Unless you think there's some kind of crazy check. Uh, so this one I will use. When you on this mechanic on the boss, you want to try to mirror's image the first one, block the second one, and then mirror's image the third one. Because you can have personals up for everyone. And then the fourth one is pretty much just like whatever you, whatever you have left, right? It could be like your potions. Uh, it could be mirror's image, for example. But you want to try to alter time, first and third one. And ice block the second one. Uh, so this is going to be the one that I block. I let my group know so they can just take whatever orbs around me. So they can, they can, take, they can take all those orbs. I ice block it and then we continue casting. We are going to use a second combust in this fight because this fight, remember boss fights in Sanguine Depths are pretty hard. We are going to go ahead and use a second combust here. <clears throat> and uh, yeah, pretty much just a standard single target combust, right? Uh, Runa. And yeah, so I mirror's image. This, this last one, because this is going to be the last one we get, I'm pretty sure. I'm going to use Mirror's Image. I'm going to make sure I Barrier, Alter Time. He called for Link, so I uh, went into Link. I will Mirror's Image to help my group. Um, I think, I'm, not, I'm not sure if I died just standing in a circle, or if that was just to the damage. I'm actually not sure right there. But, um... Yeah, we just uh we use shifting power and then during that one commission that one you know with the circles coming on the ground we use two blinks to kind of cast shifting power while the mechanic is going on, if that makes sense. Um okay, so next pull I will have combust for pretty much on pull. It's in ten seconds. <clears throat> if my shifting power is not up, then I will just you know do a combust without shifting power. An AoE combust without shifting power. Um so the, the mobs were the mobs are actually gathering. So the tank stays pulling back, right? So what I'm gonna do is is I'm gonna precast flame strike, and then when the mobs come in, they're all gathered. My flame strike should land like perfectly, right? I'm going to cast combust at the end of the flame strike, and then pretty much do the same opener. Casting combust at the end of your flame strike is good if you can get the precast off. But if mobs are gonna die quick, you kind of want to not precast just because. You know, mobs only have a certain amount of HP, and if you're playing with classes like Hunters, or classes like, I mean, any Burst class, right? Any class can have Burst. When you know they're Bursting, you kind of just want to throw your damage out instead of, you know, waiting, like, the precast, right? So because those mobs are being gathered, I casted, and I wanted to wait for aggro, I did a Mirror's Image, I wanted to, you know, precast into it. So two mobs, we pull back, same thing. I'm gonna precast flame strike so they come in, they get hit. Um so it's two it's gonna be two mobs and then prideful. So it's 79%. So what we should do is kill these mobs evenly. I don't think that was the case. I think we kind of destroyed the overseer. But it's it, it worked out. The overseer is the more dangerous mob. 
So it is a fair argument to kill the Overseer because Overseer has put this lame debuff on you right here. Kind of sucks. But I do have Combust, right? So I'm going to save my Combust for the Prideful that comes up right here. So when this mob dies, I'm going to pretty much use Mirror's Image and I'm going to Combust the Prideful. Because remember, Pridefuls, they get hard, especially on Grievous. Prideful Grievous is really hard. So yeah, single target combust on the Prideful right here. Runa power, shifting power, of course. But we're paying attention to the Boomkin with the debuff. To make sure that the red circles don't hit us. And uh, yeah, just try to take this guy out, man. Like, use Use everything on Prideful. Prideful is... Especially on Grievous, is the most like scary thing. Right here, we uh, we actually we defeated the prideful. I think we used Link there, Spirit Link. Not sure. So this mob is just standard. My combust is on thirty seconds. We're just gonna do a standard single target, right? Uh, nothing really special here, right? Just, uh, just make sure you keep Fire Blast on cooldown, keep Phoenix Flames on cooldown. Um, Scorch when you can. I think I might have been reading my stream, so I didn't actually look at, like, when, some, sometimes I don't instantly Scorch below 30, because, just because, if you see me doing that, it's just because I didn't notice, pretty much. I was, I was probably looking at something else. So the tank does this one strategy where you pull stuff back. Um. Regardless of if, if he pulls back or if he go up, do a combust, right? It doesn't, it doesn't really matter. What, whatever your tank wants to do it, just throw a combust out. Because most times, your groups won't be doing the pack, this strat where you pull back. I think we only did it for the first one. So, yeah, regardless, try to throw... Unless, unless you're not scared of the adds... I would throw a single target combust, but if you're scared of the ads and there's casters, I would definitely do an AoE combust here. And tr try to let Shifting Power do a lot of the cleave as well, if that makes sense. But right here, that mobs gather, AoE combust, and Shifting Power a little bit earlier. And as soon as that Shifting Power is done, we're going to switch to a single target combust. The Shifting Power will do all the cleave. And then, yeah, shifting, and then after the sh Shifting Power has... Uh, sorry, I'm speaking too fast. After Shifting Power has done its cleave, then swap back to a single target combust. Because remember, this this is like a priority mob. You want to try to burn the mob down, right? Uh, when you see him cast Gloom Skull, you want to go to the person with the shield. With that circle, it's usually the tank. And most times, it's yeah, it's usually the tank that picks it up. So when you see a Gloom Skull, you can, you want to step into it. At certain key levels, you can just alter time at full HP and then alter time after, but that's if you're pretty much very lazy with movement. You can just walk into the circle, right? Um. So there's a... Uh, we come into this pack. I have no combust. And the next mod pull is going to be the boss. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to use Shifting Power here. Like, my Combust was not up on pull, but I use Shifting Power, but I will not Combust. The reason is, is that I want Shifting Power to do a lot of damage. And by the time Shifting Power has done its damage, the pack is already dead, so I don't want to Combust it. So I can just do a Combust on this next pack. It pretty much gives you damage for both packs in this certain scenario. So I will I did a I did a single target combust here. Because I wanted to These mobs aren't that dangerous because they're not the casters. The casters you kind of want to because I think the casters are very scary. Okay, so this was a single target combust. Even though I would have probably done more damage if I did a flame strike combust, like more overall damage. Uh if you care about timing the key, you wanna try to if it's not dangerous mobs, you want to try to blow down the priority target. 
Um, so, okay, something to keep in mind is that this is actually super dumb. When you're shifting power at this edge right here, it pulls the sentinel. And this is what happened is we pulled the sentinel. So when you're shifting power, I mean, if the, if the sentinel is not flying by, then it's good. But also just try to not be right at the edge. Try to kind of hang towards this side more when you're shifting power. I kind of forgot that's a thing. So this sentinel was pulled by my shifting power. So be careful of that. Uh, so yeah, the, the boss dies. It goes away. Uh, I'm going to combust this guy because it was kind of my mistake that this pulled. So I'm just going to you know, throw a single tire combust out to try to kill this ad because it was my fault that this was pulled. Mob is also very scary happens it happens okay the next poll i'm going to have runa power and shifting power so i'm going to look to use that for my aoe that's going to be the main source of my aoe right um i guess they they called the line the mobs back so i had to come back here and yeah just use shifting power it's shifting power hitting in on, on a lot of mobs is very good one thing also that i want to mention special mention is that if you have a vent theory in this key you know how each dungeon has how do I say is each dungeon each dungeon has a covenant specific ability that you know buffs you in sanguine depths if you stack dead bodies onto the lantern that the vent theories can pick it will give you a stacking buff that increases your damage by five percent for each stack you have and it looks like this so currently I have nine stacks of the debuff because we killed nine corpses onto this lantern so I think you need to kill the corpses and then press the the vent theory presses it, and you get the 9 stack debuff. So pretty much this debuff, right now, is a 45 second damage buff. It's actually insane. It's very insane. I did not know this was a thing. I didn't know that this buff stacked. You can see right there, right? 45% damage and 45% healing. Um, I didn't know this was a thing, or that the buff stacked until today. Or yesterday when I made this, or when I did this. I did not know that it stacked. So um, I have no combust, so I'm just gonna flame strike the mobs because there's casters, right? The acolytes they cast spells. Casters are usually scary, so we're taking those guys out. As soon as it's done, we're gonna be you know single target combust. We have a 45% damage buff currently. So if, if you have a vent there, it is so good. Yeah, right here, single target combust on this guy. He ports behind me, which would kind of it kind of trolled me actually, but uh, it happens, right? happens um we're gonna shifting power probably soon here i guess those mobs didn't come in because they got rooted so i'm not gonna shifting power plus the, the ad is phasing but i did not shifting power there uh next pull is going to be the three mobs and i'm pretty sure we're going to use the shifting power in the pack i i think i did should just be hard yeah I precasted the flame strike because I know my tank's gonna jump in there. Yeah, rune of power, shifting power, uh, and just cast flame strikes. Right, your goal: hard cast flame strikes. You're not gonna get a combustible, but you're just gonna sit there and hard cast flame strikes, and hopefully, you know, you don't you do more than the tank. Because it's it's actually not bad if you can like aim flame strikes very well, right? Right now, my flame strikes are getting very good value. I see that a mob's going to be below 30% soon, and I'm going to Scorch. Um, nothing really special here, I guess. Yeah, if you see Stone Skin, always kick it. But other than that, you're just right now you're just throwing out all your damage, trying to flame strike everything. Uh, next pull is it's going to be next pull is Prideful. So you are going to use combust because then it's going to be prideful to where you can recharge your combust and then boss you will have combust on pull. So if you're in a scenario like this where it's, you know, one pull, prideful boss, use combust all the time. This pull, just uh, throw out an AoE flame strike. Use shifting power, of course. And as soon as all the mobs die, so all the mobs died, 
And then I still had combust left, and there's two mobs, which means halfway through your combust, you will swap to pyroblasting and phoenix flamesing because you know two mobs died. Or all the mobs all the mobs died and there was two mobs left is what I meant to say. Sorry. There was two mobs left after all the mobs died, which means you will swap to Pyroblast. Um the yeah, last prideful of the dungeon, you kind of want to remember always use your health stones and health potions on prideful. I think it's better, because especially on Grievous, like like oh, the next week where we don't have Grievous, you're gonna really see how much easier prideful is. It's a lot easier to deal with. So uh, have health stone. I see that my shaman, I think my shaman popped ascendance. Yeah, so when you see your shaman pop ascendance, you kind of can be like, okay, we're going to be probably fine until ascendance is gone, right? So if I need to, though, I will uh, hellstone if I really, really need to. I altered up full right there, but I don't think it was needed. So, yeah, we're, we're chilling, right? So pretty much, you know, last boss of the dungeon, potion, lust, everything. Potion, lust, everything. Try to pre-potion here. Just for comfortability and then uh yeah just single target combust all the way you have lust on pull you have prideful this boss should be fucking this boss should die very very quick um we have a boomkin as well and as you saw boomkins they kind of do insane single target like i think i, pop, I popped everything on pull and i'm still doing i'm not even i'm not even like, like the boomkin is just doing so much more than me so, but uh, what you can do on this bot, this right here, um, if you get the first, if you get the little, I don't even know what the debuff is called, Wicked Rush, you can actually just block off the arrow instantly, like I did right here, I blocked instantly as I see it, and then it it removes you from the charge. It means it means so you cannot be charged. You just press block instantly, and you're good. You can stand still. What it does is it makes it so it was on me and the shaman, right? The shaman has the other one. It means the shaman can know that he's the only one that it's going to charge to. And with prideful, with prideful, it gives you movement speed, so you can actually just outrun it, right? So the shaman he's gonna outrun it. Just like that. He outran the bleed. So it's it's very helpful to your group if you block it off and let them know, okay, like, hey, this charge, I blocked it off, it's only gonna go to you. Um, at this point, just uh, farm your combust back as much as you can. Try to stand in between these whenever you can, so that when one blasts, you can step over to the other side. Just like that. Then, uh, you know, look at my combust timing. Right here, I'm going to, no, I'm not going to use a single fire blast anymore. I think I tried to use invis here, but it didn't work. If you want to use invis here, you need to invis the second, you want to try to invis when he charges. Or it, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't work. I kind of messed up right there, personally. But boss is gonna die, and my combust comes up, so I'm just gonna throw my combust at him. The boss, remember, he dies at 51, so you want to, you want to just destroy the boss, right? Because if boss is dying soon, it's best to just put combust on cooldown. But that was the end of the dungeon. We timed it with a minute 50 left. Uh, this is a a, a group with no rogue. Uh, Windwalker is almost as good as Rogue, maybe even better. I actually think that Windwalker is performing very well. I, I don't think that Rogue is as required as it was. So yeah. Um, so this was an 18 Sanguine Depths. Um, this is one of, I actually don't mind this dungeon. I think it's one of my more favorite ones. Like, I definitely like this more than like Plaguefall or Theater, but it's not as good as like, you know miss or halls but it's still a good dungeon so but yeah that was a plus 18 um if you guys want to see i think i've done this is the fourth dungeon i've done so far so if you want to see more dungeons you know let me know down below what dungeon you'd like to see next i think i have four more to do so whatever you'd like to see next just let me know and i'll i'll get to it right so thank you guys for watching and until next time